Tata Motors has announced Open Collaboration 2.0 that promises reliable and seamless charging infrastructure in the country, seamless transactions via RFID 24 by 7 call assistance to plan trips better, and installation of 500 120 kilowatt fast chargers across Mumbai, Delhi, Bengaluru, Pune. To dive deeper into Open Collaboration 2.0, we have with us Balaji Rajan, the Chief Strategy Officer of Tata Passenger Electric Mobility. Let's listen in. Thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18 as well as Overdrive. As per a recent industry study, the charger to EV deficit in India today is one charger per 135 EVs, which is quite surprising. How can manufacturers help reduce this gap and what is Tata's strategy for adding more charging stations in India by 2013? I do realize Open Collaboration 2.0 is part of that strategy when we look at charging i think it's important to realize that there are three types of charging one is home charging which suffices possibly 90 percent of the demands of a private car owner the second is semi-captive charging or semi-public charging for example in communities residential communities it could be uh, in commercial workspaces etc and the third is public charging yeah. oftentimes only the public charging number is considered when we look at charging infrastructure in India. As of right now, India actually has close to about 1.7 uh, lakh chargers uh, for about 2.5 lakh cars. Uh, most of these are home chargers right. because it's very convenient for someone to charge at home. Mm -hmm. When it comes to public charging, India has about 18,000 public chargers currently. Uh, this is spread out across the country. The irony is that while there is significant public charging around the country, uh, public charging is not a very regular or frequent use case for an EV mm -hmm. owner. So there is a limited viability for public charging as of today. What Tata Motors has done through open collaboration is direct the installation of public chargers to the right hotspots mm -hmm. so that uh, the utilization is improved because EV owners would also want to stop at these locations to charge mm. and uh, that has created a greater viability for public charging. And now when we look forward, India today has about uh, a quarter million EVs. This will need to grow two to three times mm. over the next uh, three, four years. Mm. In this sort of period, charging will also have to make three, four times growth. Right. And to enable this, we have created Open Collaboration 2.0 mm. and Open Collaboration 2.0 brings all uh, stakeholders in the charging ecosystem together mm. and uh, we will collectively address multiple pain points that customers face and also address the viability for charge point operators so that this can be a self-sustaining and growing ecosystem that can support EV adoption. I like Tata EV's idea of verifying chargers for reliability, but there's another issue we face. We often find public chargers occupied by commercial taxis. How can your app or the service help us avoid this and make trip planning much smoother? The IRA.EV app, mm. uh, which is our connected car application, it has a charge point aggregator app embedded within it. Mm. It enables one to identify where the chargers are as well as whether the chargers are in use or not. This will enable users to figure out which charger are in and around them is currently available and not occupied. So this is one key initiative through which we will be able to address this uh, issue. The second one is we are creating the Tata.EV mega chargers. Mm. Now, these chargers will have capacity of 120 kilowatt and up, and up to four guns. So, which basically means that four cars can charge at any given time. Mm. So, this will also enable uh, EV owners to be able to find a spare charging gun as well as a parking spot to be able to charge without uh, having to worry about uh, being stuck in line. Right. You, you actually mentioned about the mega chargers. Uh, how many of these will be solely 120 kilowatt fast chargers and how many of them will be 60 kilowatt split into two? At the moment, our preference is to have 120 kilowatt chargers with four guns. Mm. Uh, some locations may have constraints that may require us to split it, mm. but our endeavor would be to maximize the number of 120 kilowatt chargers and also in some cases go beyond 120 kilowatts and have mm. even larger formats as well if the location permits it. The key thing is to ensure that the location mm. uh, has all the relevant back end infra to be able to support it because mm. uh, charging 
has a significant load on the overall electric grid and so uh, ensuring that the grid is capable of supplying this kind of power is uh, what's critical. So we will be directed by that. So what is the timeline of setting up these 500 chargers? The first phase is when we said we will do 500 and the first phase for us is the next 12 months. Okay. And we don't have to wait 12 months to see the first of these. We will see these very, very shortly. All right. And since you said that there are going to be 500 of these, would you be able to give me a number on how many would be 120 and how many would be 60, 60? As I said, Not our yet. endeavor would be to maximize the 120. Right. So frankly, if I can do all 500, 120, I would. Hmm. Uh, and 60 is more of a, uh, a backstop in case we are unable to do 120. What can you do as a car maker now that you have your own seamless payment app to bring down cost of you know public charging? So, the drivers of uh, public charging tariff mm. are threefold. One is the cost of incoming power. Mm. Second is the capex cost. Third is the utilization. Mm. Of these, uh, as we go into larger and larger format of chargers, we believe that there could be interesting op options for green power tie-ups, which can reduce the cost of incoming power. When it comes to the capex, like with most other aspects of uh, the EV ecosystem, over time, costs have been coming down. Mm. So we believe that there could be an opportunity there. And the third is utilization. And as an OEM, we can affect that the most. So uh, as a part of the Tata.EV mega chargers, mm. we will have discounts for our customers up to 25%, right. which will direct uh, more customers to these locations, which will improve the utilization, which should also ultimately result in an improvement uh, in utilization and ROI, which results in a lower tariff. Uh, this is our broad thinking around this, mm -hmm. but uh, as, as uh, things evolve over time, mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that driven by lower capex costs as well as uh, renewable energy tie-ups, mm -hmm. the cost of public charging will come down anyway. While moving towards seamless transactions, how will the RFID work? Sure, we're in the process of uh, still trialing it and piloting it. Mm -hmm. The RFID card sits on top of our uh, unified wallet. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's another way of accessing the unified wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with CPOs to enable adoption of the unified wallet. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, along with the RFID uh, card, if they have an RFID de device uh, mm -hmm. in the charger, uh, it should just be a token that replicates uh, the transaction that's uh, anyway done over a mobile phone. Okay. So it will be really seamless. Okay, And that would take around a month's time, right, to come into play? The, uh, yes, with uh, select CPOs, hmm. we are intending to showcase the RFID ca the card in about a month's time. Okay. Uh, but we would probably need a little bit more time to onboard even more CPOs to make it truly seamless across the charging ecosystem. Early last year, Tata Motors signed an MOU with HPCL to collaborate in setting up 5,000 EV chargers across the country and established public charging stations in India. What's the status on that front? So HPCL is part of the open collaboration, yeah. uh, what we spoke of, open collaboration 1.0. Yeah. In open collaboration 1.0, what we were offering was uh, pinpoint data mm. on locating charge, charging mm. infrastructure so that uh, the charging infrastructure can be located where the customers need it. Mm. So we've shared significant inputs along with HPCL uh, as well as all the other open collaboration partners in terms of where there is a demand for chargers so that they will get a better return on investment and their investments are also deployed in the right places where the ultimate objective of a greater EV adoption in the country can also happen. Uh, I would have to get back to you in terms of where we are in terms of the number, number. of chargers installed. Uh, but okay. that is something that is driven by HPCL as they are the investor. Right. Thank you so much for this uh, insightful interview and your time as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much.